Okay, so on my screen, it looks like everyone's done. Yeah. All right. Um, so our next order of business is going to be the packet that I just handed out to you guys while you guys were working. Um, I want to go over some rhetorical analysis tips. Because you guys are writing your next time right on Wednesday. Oh yeah, sorry. Oh, can I get a packet? Yeah, I guess. Sorry. It's only someone I could Thank you. Yeah. Um and it is going so before we start, let me just tell you how it's gonna be set up. So I've modeled the prompt after what you would see on the exam. So you have kind of the background information paragraph followed and then like the task that you're asked to write and then a passage from the text. There are two different passages, so you don't know which one you're gonna get, but I tried to find two that were equal in complexity and related to some of the things we've talked about in class, okay? So, if you haven't read all of the text, but you've read some of it, and you've paid attention in class, you're in a good spot. If you haven't read any of the text, I honestly am not sure what spot you're in. You might be able to swing it, I don't know. You can, a lot of you are probably really good at just like flying by the seat of your pants. I don't know. Um, and if you've been diligently reading, you're definitely in a good spot. But the good news is that if you are, can only, let's say this is the first passage from this text you've ever read, right? You at least have something to go on, right? Now, the issue is that the prompt asks you to analyze the particular passage in light of the text as a whole. So you're going to have to pull from previous discussions, right, and previous chapters you've read. But it's still possible to pass the essay if you haven't been diligently reading. You tracking what I'm saying? Because the skills I'm looking for are what matter. So if you can analyze the passage, you're in a good spot. So keep that in mind. Um, I'm trying to make it look like what the rest of your Q2s are going to look like, right? you're gonna be given a passage and you're gonna be asked to analyze it, right? So that should hopefully be comforting to you. I'm not gonna have you do what I, uh, you did with the summary where you have to look at the whole text, right? Kind of narrow our focus, because those are the skills we focused on in this unit, is like analyzing a, a, small, a chunk of text, okay? Um, and I also want you guys to feel prepared. Where did my copy go? Um, so we're gonna start with this uh, rhetorical analysis, 10 commandments, which is actually the last page of your packet. I know that seems fireworks. Are you okay? Say on Wednesday. Uh-huh. A full essay. Yeah. So, it doesn't have to be five paragraphs. The five paragraph format is, is there for you if you want it, but it can be four, it can be six, it doesn't matter. What matters is the content of the paragraphs. I could care less how many there are. Are we... Do we know the passage before? Nope. Okay. So I'm trying to emulate what it's going to be like on the exam, right? You are not right. given the passage ahead of time, right? And you are actually given about 40 minutes for each essay on the exam. So this timed right, like when we have a block schedule, I still give kids about 40, 45 minutes to do it, right? I just generally ease us into it. This year we just can't ease you into it. So. Keep that in mind, like this is gonna emulate the exam, right? So we wanna be prepared for that. Um, so the 10 commandments. We have talked about all of this already. I put it all in one document, okay? So the 10 commandments are just the things that, I, that the College Board looks for when we talk about rhetorical analysis, okay? And then if you look at the rest of the packet, you'll see a page that says step one, annotating the prompt, Step two, reading and annotating. Step three, planning, okay? That is the step, literally the five steps you take to write an essay in a time constraint, okay? We have already talked about annotating the prompt. We have already talked about annotating the text. So again, this is just kind of giving you like a, a be all end all packet to guide you. And then the middle, well, actually I'm not sure exactly what order these got copied in, but um, there's an outline, a sample outline for you where I give you the introduction and the pressy format 
And then your three body paragraphs, knowing full well that you can have two or four or five, whatever you want. And then your conclusion. And we're going to go over this in detail, I promise. And then, for those of us who are feeling quite, oh, I don't know, what's the word? Adventurous. This breaks down what your body paragraphs should look like, sentence to sentence, and your conclusion paragraph, okay? I'm going to tell you right now, for this particular essay, don't stress about the conclusion, because I will just be skimming it. I'm looking at your body paragraphs and your pressy. Okay. We're going to talk about conclusion strategies because it's one of the most obnoxious things to read because <laughs> a lot of times it's just like a regurgitation of everything that was said. So we're going to work on that skill later. Focus on the body paragraphs and the intro. Yeah. Uh, are you just going to grade it like an AP test? I'll use the AP rubric. Ooh. We'll be beginning uh, essay rewrites. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, my plan is to almost is to always give you a chance for rewrites. I'm the only I say almost always because there might be a time where like if it's the end of the semester, you we may not have a chance for a rewrite. So so tomorrow we don't have any homework other than preparing ourselves. Correct. For Wednesday. And you're you're supposed to be reading chapters 12, 14, and fifteen. Tomorrow? Not all tomorrow. Oh throughout the whole week. And I say supposed to be. Because I also understand that many of you are going to be focusing your attentions on this, and I am okay with that. So, however, the passages are from chapters 14 and 15. Passages? Well, there are two different ones. Gotcha. And we choose one? I just give you one. Oh. It's, it's a free for all. Oh, so like she might have a different passage. Oh, okay. Yep. Three chapters, 14 and 15. I mean, they're from chapters 14 and 15. Yeah. So. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You can use your book on the test. The prompt is a Q2. It's a rhetorical analysis. Analyze the author's choices and how those choices, I mean, it's the same prompt for every rhetorical analysis. Or just, it's literally just like analyze their... <laughs> You've seen these before. Okay. Here's Multiple times. So it follows the same exact format. The only okay. things that change are the dates and the authors and the text. Okay. Oh, so it's like the thing of like, oh, why did she use these words? Like, what did they, like, how did it help those Do you guys remember that PowerPoint where I literally was like, the anatomy of the Q2 prompt? And I... I projected it and we broke it down. And the first part is the rhetorical situation. They give us all the speaker information. And then the last part is, in a well-developed essay, analyze the choices that speaker blah, blah, blah uses in order to convey his or her message of blah, blah, blah. We broke it down already once, right? I think we just maybe, I, I don't know. Huh? I forgot. It's always, the Q2 is always the same general task. It's always a rhetorical analysis and it always has the same general formula. What's Q2 stand for? Question two. Q2. On the exam. Q2. Because so we have Q1, Q2, and Q3. Q1 is synthesis. We talk about that next semester. Q2, we, we talk about it all the time because it's the hardest. And then Q3 is Those argument. are the three different essay prompts we're going to get. And yep. this one's a two. Yes. Number two essay. The hardest. Okay. It is the hardest one. We, we practice it all How year. many points is this worth? 80. Eight? 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. 80. I was like, oh, oh that's no big deal. No, 80. Okay, so Great. all of your writing is always worth 80. The other one was worth 50. Yeah, because I was feeling merciful. Rude. I did good on that one. <laughs> Rhetorical analysis, 10 commandments. Okay. Again, we've gone over this. This is me trying to refresh your memory, right? We're reviewing before the test, right? It's an awesome. Number one, rhetorical analysis moves beyond listing devices or listing appeals. And we have talked about that. That's why we have the pressy, right? You are not supposed to just say the author does this, this, and this, and then talk about this, this, and this. You are looking at the text holistically. You are discussing how and why the strategy builds the argument. Okay. Um, you, of course, address the rhetorical situation. Otherwise, you're not doing your job as a person who's doing rhetorical analysis. Okay. 
Number two, to determine what kinds of strategies are used, you consider things like structure, where is the main claim, what is the main claim, the development of the idea, so the patterns or methods of development, uh, you look for rhetorical devices, you look for syntax, tone, right? All of the things on the rhetorical triangle, right? You do not directly discuss logos, ethos, pathos. You don't say the author uses ethos as one of your strategies. It's not a strategy, it's an appeal, right? Instead, you would say, in order to appeal to the audience's emotions, like sympathy or something, the speaker uses blah, blah, blah strategy. Right, because the appeals are a means to an end. They achieve a certain effect. They aren't the effect. So, what would an example of a strategy be? Um, like the methods of development would be. Yep, exemplification, or you could even say that they, um, like, they use parallel syntax or okay. um, juxtaposition, right. or they juxtapose light and dark in order to convey something. Can we use that list of terms sure. you gave us? On sure. The, like, can we have it there? But remember, I'm not looking for a list of terms. Oh, yeah, so yeah. only use them if you're using, you're like, oh, I can't remember what yeah, the strategy that's is what I mean. yeah. Can we use this? Yes. Okay. okay. Let's go. So, so, the book. Yes. Can yes. we not write that? Just no. It was a joke. No, it wasn't. You meant it. Number I three. Do it, but I'll do it. Identify the main point, idea, or purpose. Remember that this is all centered on the author's main assertion and the why behind that main assertion. Again, rhetorical triangle, right? Do not use info from the prompt just to fill space, right? That first sentence of the pressy is where you put all of the, the, the basic information, right? The who and the what and the where and the when, okay? Yeah. Are you talking about like the main assertion of the book as a whole as far as we've read it or the main assertion of the passage you're giving us? Probably Read the passage carefully. Then in a well-developed essay, analyze how Dillard uses this passage in order to conclude and culminate the meaning of her text as a whole. Oh, okay. Does that help? Yep, that's, a, that's the essay right there? Yeah. 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 Now you can sign back down. I'm sure. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Okay. Uh, number five, avoid summarizing. Do not tell me what the text says because I've read it. Right? Tell me why it matters and how it's said. What is the text doing, not what is the text saying? And you guys know that from lit analysis. It's the same thing, right? Uh, summary tells us who and what. Analysis tells us why, how, and so what. And that's what we care about. Um, don't use mindless phrases. These are, this is the, like the PG version of the no shit Sherlock statements, right? So try not to put that in writing in case your parents are like easily offended or something. <laughs> Don't use things like the author uses diction. No shit, Sherlock. Again, I'm recording. I do this every time I'm recording, and it's going to end up online anyway. Okay. Oh, is your mic on? It is on. I remember. Hey. Okay. Um, don't say that the imagery paints a vivid picture in the reader's mind. That is what imagery is. That's a definition. That's not an analysis, right? It talks about that. Use examples from the text to prove to me that the author does, in fact, use the strategy that you say she's using. Every strategy should be connected to your claim about the text. We call that line of reasoning, right? We revisit our thesis every paragraph. Um, and then the last two, number nine, this is something that we'll work on because it's it's a habit to say that the author uses a metaphor or the author uses juxtaposition. I want us to shift our thinking and turn those into verbs, right? So instead of saying the author uses juxtaposition, the more sophisticated way to say that would be the oxter, oxter? the author juxtaposes, right? We turn juxtaposition into the verb, so then it becomes a strategy rather than a device, right? That's gonna take practice, but keep that in mind, okay? And then avoid second person. We don't use you or your in formal writing. First person is usually okay, unless you're just saying, I think and I believe over and over again. But in general, no you unless you're quoting a text, right? So those are the, I guess you could call them Ten Commandments. Uh, they're tips. They're things that we're looking for as instructors. The next thing 
that I want you to look at is the actual, it's the outline. So the rhetorical analysis outline format. And I think for some of you, it's page three. These copies got all weird and wonky when I had them made in the copy room. The lady who made them or whatever. It's all good. It's all there. It's just on different pages. So this is the page that I would recommend you have out when you're writing. Because when we get all worked up, we kind of forget about structure. And this will help you kind of come back, right? We have the Pressy formula right here. And then we have body paragraphs. And each body paragraph has the same general structure. We have a topic sentence, which is what the body paragraph's about. And then we have the evidence and the commentary, and the evidence and the commentary, right? And then our next body paragraph moves on to the second chunk of the text. We have another topic sentence, evidence and then commentary, right? So this should be helpful for you. And then, the step one, annotating the prompt page. We have talked about annotating the prompt before, and this is why, okay? So let's say I gave you this prompt. Carefully read the following passage from American author Mark Twain, Two Views of the Mississippi, 1883. Then write an essay in which you analyze how Twain's style conveys his two distinct views of the Mississippi River, support your analysis with specific references to the text. I annotated for you what I think would be significant for the rhetorical situation and my understanding of the passage, right, Stephen? Yeah. So I know that he's American. I know that he wrote after the Civil War, because it says 1883, so I say he's a realist and a naturalist, because that's not necessarily common knowledge, but obviously an English teacher should hopefully know that. I know that I'm supposed to analyze style and I'm supposed to look at his two distinct views or his two distinct perspectives or his two distinct attitudes toward the Mississippi River. So I'm looking for tone, right? And now that I have that understanding, I can read the text with a very specific purpose in mind, right? I'm looking for his two distinct views that he's gonna convey to me through tone, right? And if I hadn't annotated the prompt, I might be missing that key information. Right? You've got to answer the prompt. If you don't answer the prompt, you can't score very well in the rubric. Okay? Then step two is reading and annotating the text. Step three is planning, which in my opinion is writing the pressy statement and having a loose understanding of what your body paragraphs are going to be about. You don't have time for much else. Step four, outline. Again, not much time to write a full outline, but have a general understanding of how you're gonna move through your analysis, chunk one of the text, chunk two of the text, chunk three of the text, and then you draft your essay, which is step five. And again, these are drafts, right? Because you don't have time to make them final. So, this is an open note exam, right? The only notes that aren't open to you are the, the ones you find on Google. I will know because I also use Google. And I also know how you write at this point, believe it or not. And so I can generally, like if I suspect something, I usually can find it. So please don't plagiarize on Wednesday. So it's just a bummer um, to have to have that conversation. Um, what else? We talked about what the prompt looks like. The passage is, I'll just show you a glimpse. It's like that long-ish, okay, two paragraphs. Again, trying to emulate the, the length of the passage you see on the exam. You can handwrite it or type it. It's set up as a quiz on Canvas, so it'll automatically end after the 45 minutes. And that's so that if anyone has to do this at home, they don't get an unfair advantage of working as long as they want to. Okay. If you choose to handwrite it, you just give me a physical copy and not worry about it. And there is no school tomorrow. So... But if you have questions about anything, email me. I'll be checking my email intermittently. I'm intentionally trying not to work too hard, but obviously, if you need me, I am there for you.